December 1943. American farms faced a crisis no one talks about today. Every pound of nitrogen in the country was being shipped overseas. Not to feed crops, to make bombs. Ammonium nitrate, the same chemical that makes plants grow, was the key ingredient in military explosives. Factories that once made fertilizer were now making weapons. Farmers had a choice, watch their soil die, or remember what their grandparents knew. They chose to remember. Across the country, farmers planted a simple flowering plant with deep red blooms, crimson clover. Within one growing season, this plant pulled nitrogen straight from the air and deposited it into the soil. 50 to 125 pounds per acre, for free. No factories, no chemicals, no cost except seeds. By 1945, American farms had survived the war using nature's own fertilizer system. Then, something changed. The bomb factories needed new customers. And the plant that had saved American agriculture became the industry's number one enemy. This is the story of how one plant fixed soil forever without chemicals, and why the fertilizer industry spent decades trying to erase it from history. Number one, the science they don't teach. To understand why the fertilizer industry fears this plant, you need to understand what it does. Nitrogen makes up 78% of the air you breathe right now. It surrounds every farm on Earth. But plants cannot use atmospheric nitrogen directly. The molecules are locked together in a bond so tight that only two forces in nature can break them apart, lightning and bacteria. Legumes discovered a third way. Crimson clover, along with other legumes like hairy vetch, white clover, and field peas, formed a partnership with soil bacteria millions of years ago. The bacteria are called rhizobium. Here is how the partnership works. The clover roots release chemical signals into the soil. These signals attract rhizobium bacteria floating nearby. The bacteria enter the root hairs and begin multiplying. Within weeks, small bumps called nodules form along the roots. If you cut one open, you will see a pink or red center. That color comes from legemoglobin, a protein similar to the hemoglobin in your blood. Inside these nodules, something remarkable happens. The bacteria convert atmospheric nitrogen into ammonia. The chemical formula is simple. N2 becomes NH4. Nitrogen gas becomes plant-available ammonium. The plant feeds the bacteria sugar from photosynthesis. The bacteria feed the plant nitrogen from thin air. This process requires no external energy, no fossil fuels, no factories, no pipelines, just seeds, soil, and sunlight. According to research from North Carolina State University, crimson clover produces 2,000 to 5,000 pounds of biomass per acre, while fixing 50 to 125 pounds of nitrogen. The United States Department of Agriculture confirms that when overseeded on grass, crimson clover provides 60 to 100 pounds or more of nitrogen per acre. At current prices of 50 cents to 65 cents per pound for synthetic nitrogen, that represents 50 to 65 dollars worth of free fertilizer every single year. From a plant that costs 12 to 38 dollars per acre to seed, the math is simple. The implications are devastating for an industry that sells nitrogen by the ton. Number 2. The World War II Necessity To understand how farmers rediscovered this ancient technology, you need to understand what happened to nitrogen during World War II. The same chemical process that fixes nitrogen for fertilizer also fixes nitrogen for explosives. Ammonium nitrate feeds corn. Ammonium nitrate also fills bombs. When the United States entered the war, nitrogen production shifted almost entirely to military use. By 1945, the United States had built 10 large-scale nitrate factories dedicated to making explosives. According to Mother Jones magazine, these facilities represented the largest nitrogen production capacity in human history. Every pound went to the war effort. American farmers were left with almost nothing. The solution was not new. It was ancient. For 10,000 years of agriculture, farmers had maintained soil fertility through one primary method. They planted legumes. Clover in pastures, peas and beans in rotation with grain crops, alfalfa for livestock feed. These plants naturally replenished what other crops removed. During the war, this knowledge saved American agriculture. Farmers who remembered their grandparents' methods planted crimson clover between cash crops. They grew hairy vetch as a winter cover. They rotated beans and peas through their fields. 
Victory Gardens across the country used companion planting with nitrogen-fixing legumes to maximize yields without synthetic inputs. The system worked, food production continued, soil remained fertile, and American farms survived the war without depending on factories that were busy making weapons. But the war ended, and the bomb factories needed a new business model. Number 3. The Post-War Betrayal Here is what the history books leave out. When World War II ended, the United States government faced an unusual problem. According to the Smithsonian Magazine, the country had a tremendous surplus of ammonium nitrate originally manufactured for explosives. European and Japanese production facilities lay in ruins. America stood as the undisputed global champion of nitrogen production. Ten massive factories, millions of tons of capacity, and suddenly, no bombs to make. The industry pivoted overnight. According to historians at Utah State University, quote, chemical fertilizers hit the market after World War II when the government realized that leftover ammonium nitrate, originally manufactured for explosives during the war, could be applied to crops as a nitrogen fertilizer, end quote. The marketing began immediately. Farmers who had just spent four years successfully growing crops with cover crops and natural nitrogen fixation were told they had been doing it wrong. Extension services promoted the new synthetic fertilizers as modern, scientific, and efficient. The message was clear. Only backward farmers still relied on clover. Progressive farmers bought their nitrogen in bags. The timing was perfect for the industry. New hybrid corn varieties were entering the market, bred specifically to respond to high nitrogen inputs. According to agricultural historian Vaclav Smil, these were, quote, the first kind of high-yielding grain cultivar, dependent on higher fertilizer applications, end quote. More fertilizer meant higher yields. Higher yields meant more profits. More profits meant farmers could afford more fertilizer. The cycle was designed to be permanent. Within a decade, cover cropping was largely abandoned. According to the National Wildlife Federation, conventional agriculture turned fully to synthetic fertilizers by the late 1950s. A practice that had sustained agriculture for millennia was erased in less than 15 years. But the fertilizer industry was not done. They had one more problem to solve. Number 4. The Clover Conspiracy In 1944, while bombs were still falling in Europe, Dow Chemical developed a new weapon for a different kind of war. The chemical was called 2,4-D. It was the world's first selective herbicide. 2,4-D kills broadleaf plants while leaving grass unharmed. For farmers fighting weeds in grain fields, this seemed like a miracle. For lawn owners wanting pristine grass, it was revolutionary. The chemical became commercially available in 1945, the same year the war ended. There was just one problem. 2,4-D killed clover. Before the war, clover was not considered a weed. It was considered essential. According to historical records, every bag of grass seeds sold in America contained clover seed mixed in. Lawns were supposed to have clover. The white flowers attracted pollinators. The deep roots survived drought. And the nitrogen fixation kept grass green without fertilizer. But clover was now dying wherever 2,4-D was applied. The herbicide could not tell the difference between clover and dandelions. Both were broadleaf plants. Both died. The fertilizer and chemical industries faced a choice. They could reformulate the herbicide to spare clover, or they could redefine clover as a weed. They chose the more profitable option. Starting in the 1950s, the lawn chemical industry began an aggressive campaign to redefine what a perfect lawn should look like. According to a 2025 article from Good Sweet Earth, herbicide labels began listing clover as a target species. Commercials painted it as messy and undesirable. Seed companies removed clover from grass seed mixes. The messaging stuck. The quote from Good Sweet Earth summarizes it perfectly. Quote, After World War II, chemical manufacturers faced a challenge. During the war, they produced massive amounts of synthetic chemicals for military use. When the war ended, they needed new markets. Clover became labeled a weed. End quote. The economics were simple. White clover fixes 100 to 150 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year, according to Penn State, Iowa State, and Oregon State Extension Services. If homeowners and farmers grow clover, they do not need to buy nitrogen fertilizer. If clover attracts beneficial insects, they do not need to buy as many pesticides. If clover stays green during drought,
they do not need to buy irrigation systems. One plant threatened multiple product lines. The solution was to make that plant the enemy. Number five, the numbers they hope you never see. Let me show you the math the fertilizer industry has been hiding for 70 years. In 2024, the average cost of nitrogen fertilizer for corn was approximately $162 per acre. Nitrogen application rates have increased to around 152 pounds per acre. Anhydrous ammonia costs approximately $750 per ton. Now consider crimson clover. Seed cost, $12 to $38 per acre. Nitrogen fixed, 50 to 125 pounds per acre. Additional inputs required, zero. Factories required, zero. Fossil fuels required, zero. The savings are not small. They are transformative. A farmer planting 1,000 acres of corn spends over $160,000 on nitrogen fertilizer every year. If that same farmer used crimson clover as a cover crop and captured even half the nitrogen potential, savings would exceed $50,000 annually. But the damage from synthetic nitrogen goes beyond cost. According to Yale Environment, 360 high nitrogen inputs are destroying carbon in the soil. Synthetic nitrogen overstimulates soil microbes, which then consume organic matter faster than it can be replaced. The result is soil that becomes dependent on ever-increasing fertilizer applications. The environmental costs are staggering. Nitrogen runoff creates dead zones in waterways where aquatic life cannot survive. According to research cited by Mother Jones, nitrous oxide from fertilizer is 300 times more potent as a greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. Only about 50% of applied nitrogen is actually used by crops. The rest becomes pollution. And here is the most damaging statistic. According to research published by Beyond Pesticides, synthetic nitrogen fertilizer leaches from soils to groundwater over decades. Scientists estimate it will continue leaching in low amounts for at least another 50 years, much longer than previously thought. The industry that replaced a free, natural, self-sustaining system has created a permanent pollution problem while charging farmers $160 per acre for the privilege. Number 6. The Modern Cover-Up. The influence continues today. According to a 2023 investigation by the Pulitzer Center, research on fertilizer use and runoff by public land-grant universities in the Midwest is being funded in part by the fertilizer industry itself. The Fertilizer Institute, which calls itself, quote, the voice of the fertilizer industry, end quote, spent $1.3 million on lobbying in 2022 alone. Through its Foundation for Agronomic Research, it has invested more than $8 million into university research over the past decade. Major recipients include Purdue University, Kansas State University, and the University of Illinois. The University of Missouri received over $200,000 from the foundation in 2018 and 2019. The research focus is telling. Funding goes toward what the industry calls four R practices. Right source, right rate, right time, right place. This framework assumes synthetic fertilizer remains central to farming. It optimizes chemical use rather than questioning whether chemicals are necessary at all. As one critic quoted in the Pulitzer investigation noted, the four R's have been promoted as a quote, silver bullet, end quote, for conservation. But studies show that even if all farmers adopted four R methods, it would only achieve about 15 to 20 percent of nitrogen reduction goals. The framework keeps farmers buying fertilizer while providing just enough environmental benefit to avoid regulation. Meanwhile, Cover crop research remains underfunded. According to agricultural economists, only 4.7% of total United States cropland used cover crops in 2022. The knowledge that sustained agriculture for 10,000 years now exists on fewer than 5% of American farms. 79 years ago, American farmers proved that one plant could fix soil forever without chemicals. Crimson clover pulled nitrogen from the air and deposited it in the ground. 50 to 125 pounds per acre, for free. The science is not controversial. The USDA confirms it. Every major agricultural university has published data on it. The bacteria and root nodules have been converting atmospheric nitrogen for 300 million years. But after World War II, bomb factories needed new customers. An industry worth billions of dollars emerged to sell farmers something nature provides for free. And the plant that threatened those profits was systematically erased from agricultural practice. Clover became a weed. 
cover crops became old-fashioned. Farmers who remembered the old ways were dismissed as backwards, and American agriculture became dependent on a system that costs $160 per acre, destroys soil carbon, pollutes waterways for 50 years, and emits greenhouse gases 300 times more potent than carbon dioxide. The good news is that the knowledge never disappeared completely. Cover crop acreage has increased 17% since 2017. More than half of surveyed farmers have tried cover crops at least once. The economics are shifting as fertilizer prices climb. One plant fixed soil forever. No chemicals, no factories, no pollution, just seeds and sunshine. The fertilizer industry spent 70 years trying to make you forget. Now you know why.